So, so benchmarking. Who likes to have good benchmarks? That's probably almost everybody. The problem is what we often get around benchmarks is something very different. And we look at some patterns in this very brief talk uh, of what you can do to get better benchmarking or worse benchmarking, because that is what you often get when you have a specific goal in mind and then you try to justify it with the right numbers behind that. So we'll dive into those patterns to see how they actually behave. And the first pattern is always find the right use case for what you're trying to prove in your point. It doesn't really matter if that is what your user is trying to do. You want to justify the point that you're trying to make. Um, so the first thing that you normally do is you need to find similar conditions for what you're trying to benchmark. This is my favorite benchmarking comic. Um, where under similar conditions you are proving that the squid is much smarter than the house cat, uh, but it is the same conditions, so you are proving your point here, right? Or to put differently, benchmarking or benchmarking 101 is you test a couple of scenarios and you throw all of those away where you are not showing what you want to show, but you focus on the one where you do. So we take the fourth scenario here and this is the one that we'll keep repeating after that again and again. So you generalize that one and say like this holds true for anything that you want to do um, and that is your entire point. So that is picking the right scenario for your benchmark uh, and how to do that. And this is a practical example, it's I think a few years old, uh, but when MongoDB was in the benchmarking wars uh, and somebody tried to benchmark and then they were using an experimental, unsupported, non-production Lua driver for the Sys benchmark. And Sys benchmark makes sense, but probably not in that combination. Another pattern that you can see quite frequently is that for our own product we use the latest version, but for the competitors we use some ancient crap, basically. Um, and that you need to justify somehow. And I picked one example where the justification was that since uh, Kafka has now a zookeeper replacement, you just claim that it's not feature complete or it's not widely enough used because it doesn't quite fit the benchmarking goal that you're trying to show. So you will just find a way to justify why you're not using the latest and greatest for your competitors. Um, and that one is very obvious. If I benchmark my own system against somebody else, I will know all the scenarios that work well for me. I will know all the knobs to turn uh, to make that better. Whereas for the competition, you often intentionally or unintentionally don't know. And then ignorance is placed there. Uh, so you'll just use it in a weird or wrong way. And you will naturally just win against them in your benchmarks. Uh, so that's another great trick for benchmarking. Um, another fine one is to optimize the defaults. Uh, and you just always pick, like the generalizing the use case, you pick the right defaults uh, that fit your use case rather than the competition. Um, so once you started to optimize that, another very ancient example from MongoDB was, if you remember that one, the fire and forget mode, where you would write to it, but you wouldn't even care if it would be received or written or anything, you would just send. Um, it's pretty much benchmarking UDP versus TCP. Uh, because you don't care if anything is actually received, but it's very fast. And finally, there is outright cheating. And that can be something like cars, um, or it is also pretty common in chips uh, or graphics cards. Like there are some drivers that actually recognize that you're under a benchmark, or sometimes it's cars, uh, that you recognize that you're under benchmarks, and then you will behave totally differently. And you will look great in those benchmarks. But of course, that doesn't help you in reality. So. While we want to throw out all of these bad patterns, we want to have better benchmarks, actually. So how can we get better benchmarks? And I want to take this from two sides, basically, when you create those. Um, what you want to do is you want to create benchmarks that are reproducible, and you want to give people a chance for feedback to make them better. Uh, that is, when you create benchmarks and put them out there, you should always have that in an open repository and allow people to interact with you. And the second thing is what is very natural when you see a benchmark about yourself to discredit it. So what is very common is that you see a very long benchmark and then you pick out one detail and then you say they are wrong here. And with that you say like we don't need to care about this, these results because they are wrong. Even though it might just be a very tiny part, um, but that is not very helpful. So don't try to just blame the flaws, 
but it's often helpful to figure out what you can learn from a benchmark. Even if there is a flaw in there from your competition, um, you often can learn something that you could either do better or your users might care or just a different scenario than you had been thinking about. And hopefully that will give us better benchmarks than we have been getting in the past because benchmarking seems to be very popular again, unfortunately. Thanks for joining.